But we're here on Baffin Island. It's a classic place to look at ice age patterns. The last really warm time on Baffin Island was about 125,000 years ago. What we're looking at now is glaciers disappearing. And if we look back in the past and say, when did the glaciers really completely disappear? It's really the last interglaciation. And it's just a matter of time if the current warming persists all the glaciers on Baffin Island will eventually disappear. It'll take them some time because some of them are very thick. And as they melt out then, that's what we're here looking at the edges of these rapidly receding ice margins where preserved beneath parts of those are the plants that were living there when they first formed. Baffin Island is really interesting and important for, for quite a few reasons. So this is one of the, the few places in, in this part of the Arctic where you can look at old Pleistocene ice and the landscape that it sat on and look at modern change to try to better understand the, the strength of these feedbacks and understand how they may have acted in the past and how they may in the future. So we're getting it out right here, get rid of this surficial stuff until we get down to the, the hard unaltered ice. The ice has really uh, got a piece of it here. It's got a lot of bubbles in it. It's got bits of dirt in it. So it's different than the ice that we see in most of the ice caps around here. And those characteristics suggest that this is ice from the last ice age that's never melted out during the modern warm times and it's melting out rapidly now. And we've got plants over here that also will help us to answer that question. The strange thing about these mosses is a lot of them can just start growing again. So they're, they're the closest thing to a zombie that I know of, the, the living dead, because they haven't done any photosynthesis, no hint of life in often thousands of years. And once they come out again and the ice melts back, if they haven't been disturbed, they'll start growing again. I have to get my special tool out here because some of it's frozen. Right, so we got some nice filamentous fragments there. So that's our first collection from the day and we're going to take it back in the lab. We'll clean it up, freeze dry it, isolate an individual strand and send it off for radiocarbon dating. And the age of that will tell us how long it's been since it's as warm as present. It's disturbing that the radiocarbon ages from moss collected at nine different nearby ice caps confirm that the plants have been buried beneath glacial ice for more than 40,000 years and almost certainly continuously buried since the start of the last glaciation 120,000 years ago. But they're now melting out. What's most worrisome about that is that based on the orbital terms that pace the ice ages, how close the northern hemisphere is to the sun in our summer, it tells us that the warmth today is outside the range of natural variability. It's not what you would predict from the normal cycles. We should be in a really cold time, like the little ice age. And in fact, it's now approaching something like the last interglaciation. That's what we're looking at here, is trying to put some constraints on how unusual it is, and that will help us to understand how rapid the changes might be.